Maybe we need to have some sort of legislation that requires Constitution Alive and biblical citizenship training in our schools. This is Lauren Boebert. I'm sure most of you probably know exactly who she is already, but the ideas she's laying down are getting more and more disturbing as time goes on. It all came to a head the other day when she actually endorsed the idea of a biblical citizenship test. If you can't pass a Bible test to prove you're really a Christian, you don't belong in the United States. Now, I usually try to keep politics off of this channel for the most part. This YouTube channel is about religion, not politics, but it's becoming clearer and clearer as time goes on that the two are converging to a disturbing degree. I can't avoid that fact forever. I want to look at the context behind that Bobert clip, but that wasn't the only unhinged thing that happened on that TV show. The show is called Flashpoint, and it airs on the Victory Network, owned and operated by our old buddy Kenneth Copeland. It's in every major cable package, Spectrum, Dish, DirecTV, all of them. Not to mention the various TV shows' social media presence. It's an extremely influential TV show and channel. Anyways, I wanted to take a look at the full context of the Bobert clip, and then we'll look at some of the other bizarre, unhinged stuff that was said on the show. Let's get into it. Here's the full context to the Boebert clip. She was talking about the 2022 midterm elections and the hope that Republicans will take Congress back. The American people, they have to have faith in us that we will actually do something with our majority, that we will actually secure the southern border, that we will tackle inflation and the energy crisis that is taking place in our country. and. Um, and get America uh, rolling again. Uh, maybe we need to have some sort of legislation that requires Constitution Alive and biblical citizenship training in our schools. Uh, and, and that's how we get things turned around. Uh, but there, there has to be real leadership from the Republicans, especially now. Yeah, amen to that. Well, that seems pretty clear to me. She wants a biblical citizenship test in the United States. She wants the biblical citizenship classes in schools. Now, Article 6 of the Constitution specifically says that no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. Up to now, that's been interpreted to mean that the U.S. government can't impose a religious test on anybody under any circumstances. Donald Trump tried to ban Muslims from coming to the U.S. through Executive Order 137. 769 through what was colloquially called the Muslim ban, but it was eventually superseded by another executive order, and the point became moot. It was only officially in effect from January to March 2017. This discussion about religious tests came up then too. The spirit of the Constitution is obviously opposed to having religious tests of any sort, but the specific letter of the law says you can't have a religious test to be in office or in a position of public trust. That doesn't include the general population. We can't rely on that specific article to protect us from the obvious Christian nationalism forcing its way into our lives. Boebert said she wants to impose biblical citizenship classes in schools. That's specifically forbidden in the Constitution through the First Amendment. Not only the First Amendment, but the first sentence in the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting its free exercise. This is called the Establishment Clause, and the spirit of this rule was laid out in a letter written by Thomas Jefferson in the early 1800s. The state of Connecticut was effectively being run by a Calvinist branch of Christianity, and a Baptist church wrote to Thomas Jefferson, the president at the time asking if there's anything he could do. The Baptists were being religiously persecuted for their beliefs. Jefferson wrote back to Danbury Baptists and told them he agreed with them. The First Amendment clearly outlines a separation between church and state. The Danbury letter is where that phrase came from. A state church is in direct conflict with the spirit of the First Amendment. Eventually, they took their case to the courts and won. From there, the precedent was set. Separation of church and state was a founding principle in the United States from the very beginning. Unfortunately, Bobert intends to erase that too. In a second, we'll take a look at a clip of Bobert trying to discredit the First Amendment. Before we continue, I wanted to mention something. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, there's Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. I sell all kinds of stickers and shirts and stuff on there. Or you can check out my other YouTube channels. I have my Fireside Chat channel, where I talk more about how religion is integrating itself into politics. Or you can check out my Telltale and Filter channel where I do long-form breakdowns of absolutely unhinged sermons and rallies. As a matter of fact, that's where I found this Bobert clip originally. 
I was doing a full breakdown of this Flashpoint episode and I came across it by chance. So if any of that sounds like it's up your alley, give it a watch. Okay, let's watch Boebert's attempt to discredit the First Amendment. The reason we had so many overreaching regulations in our nation is because the church complied. The church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. That is not how our founding fathers intended it. And I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk that's not in the Constitution. It was in a stinking letter, and it means nothing like what they say it does. The Founding Fathers very specifically outlined the fact that church is not supposed to give orders to the government. But facts don't matter to her. Information doesn't matter. What matters is that she intends to set up a Christian nationalist state where only Christians are welcome. So what is a Christian nationalist state exactly? I've thrown the term around a couple times already. What does the term mean? Here's the definition of the term nationalist. Quote, a person who strongly identifies with their own nation and vigorously supports its interests, especially to the exclusion or detriment of the interests of other nations. It's similar to patriotism, but not exactly the same. Patriotism is defined as devotion to and vigorous support for one's country. The fundamental difference between the two is that patriotism wants your nation to succeed. Nationalism wants your nation to crush others. There's a sense of elitism inherent in nationalism. Generally speaking, patriotism is is a good thing. A country can't survive without a sense of national unity. The extremist movements the United States is dealing with right now are not patriotic. They've been co-opted by people like Donald Trump and Lauren Boebert, who've programmed in various different forms of nationalism. Boebert, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and many others in the Republican Party have turned so-called patriotism into Christian nationalism. Similar to white nationalism, where only white people are welcome to take part in government or even live in the country, Christian nationalism intends to turn the U.S. into a Christian state where only Christians are welcome to live here. That means everybody from atheists to Muslims to Jewish people would no longer be welcome in the United States. The method of getting rid of any non-Christians in the U.S. varies from Christian nationalist to Christian nationalist. It ranges from deporting non-Christians to another country to the final solution, which was 1940s Germany's approach. But the fact that we're going down this road as a country is concerning in itself. Boebert is nowhere near the only person talking about this either. An advisor for the gubernatorial candidate of Pennsylvania, Doug Mastriano, recently said, quote, Jews and other non-Christians are not conservative because it's an explicitly Christian movement and because the U.S. is an explicitly Christian country. The guy basically said, Jews are not welcome to take part in the movement. That's a governor candidate. In fact, the entire Republican Party is parroting this kind of thing. It's in the Texas Republican Party platform. I haven't found a single Republican politician who's denounced this kind of thing. Still looking. I say this completely seriously and without a single hint of hyperbole. This is exactly how things played out in the mid-1930s in Germany. This is exactly how people got radicalized. This is exactly how a supremacist mindset formed in the psyche of an entire country of people. Once perceived superiority is introduced into a collective psyche, it's only a matter of time before serious persecution becomes a problem, which is exactly exactly what's happening. The U.S. is truly fantastic. Cars were invented in the U.S. and Germany simultaneously, but still, I think it belongs on the list anyways. Electricity was first harnessed for commercial use here. The internet wasn't invented here, but it was popularized and built out to its current glory for the first time here in the U.S. The theory of relativity was discovered here by an American. The atom bomb was created here. But you know who did most of that stuff? Immigrants. Einstein was a Jewish person from Germany. Thomas Edison, though not technically the inventor of the light bulb or the first person to harness electricity, was also an immigrant. America's strength was never its level of religiosity or how white it was. It was its diversity. Diversity made this country strong from the very beginning, and the idea of supremacy is what's tearing it apart. Unfortunately, Christian extremists hold power right now in the U.S. Despite that fact, the least persecuted people in the country are using persecution as a tactic to get what they want, which is more power. So how does it work? Let me show you. 
This is a congressman named Jason Rapert. He imposed his religious beliefs on people while acting as an agent of the government. That's a violation of the First Amendment as it's interpreted by the Supreme Court. That's against the law. It's the same reason why Congress can't pass a law to force people to go to church. So how does he frame it when the minority that he's persecuting by using the power of government to impose his religious beliefs on them? Check this out. The Attorney General told me, he said, Jason, you're being uh, deposed, you're under command of subpoena, you're demanded to appear before these five litigants, the American Atheists, the American Humanists, the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the ACLU, and the Satanic Temple, all at the same time. Wow. And I told him when it happened, I said, well, you know what, it sounds like God's just gathering them all up to take them out at once. He wishes death on them. That's what he does. When he removes people's civil liberties, when he imposes his own religious beliefs on others against their will, and they try to remedy the situation the only way they have available to them, which is through the courts, he wishes death on them. I'm an atheist. I'm pretty open about that on my YouTube channel. But my channel isn't really about Christianity. It's about extremism. It always has been. Here's the principle I stand on. I don't defend this kind of thing when it comes from Jason Rapert, and I wouldn't defend it if it came from the left or atheism or anywhere else. Listen to what else Jason had to say about the situation. Any of us that raise our voice, what they do is they swarm like a swarm of locusts, which is very biblical, yeah. to come in and do their best to silence our voices because that's what they want to stop. And there's the real strategy. He's the victim. He's arguably one of the most powerful people in the world, and he's being victimized by people who are trying to hold him accountable for what he's done. This is what it's all about with people like this. Pretend to be the victims to garner support and credibility. Get people outraged at the actual victims of the situation until you get what you want. If you want Christianity to have more power in government, then frame it like Christians are being persecuted because they aren't allowed to be in government. Nobody ever said Christians aren't allowed in government. They are. They always have been. But the Christians in government are trying to impose their religious ideology on everybody else, including Jewish people, and if they don't comply, if they try to fight back, people like Jason Rapert claim they're persecuted because these non-Christians won't just sit down and take it. They won't let him impose his beliefs on everybody else. You wouldn't think this strategy would work, but it is. The Supreme Court has already reversed constitutional protections that have existed for hundreds of years. The Constitution is pretty clear when it comes to to religious limitations. But that's not a problem when you're the Supreme Court. You can just reinterpret it to mean anything you want. Listen to this televangelist, T.D. Jakes, explain the situation pretty succinctly. The church bought into the myth that this was a Christian nation. <laughs> and once you get past that, which a lot of people are going to criticize me because they're still going to think it's a Christian nation, which is a whole different show. Mm -hmm. But once you begin to understand that democracy and, and that a republic actually is designed to be an overarching system to protect our unique nuances, then we no longer look for public policy to reflect biblical ethics. If we can divide or what you would call separation of church and state, yeah. then we can dwell together more effectively. Because atheists, agnostics, uh, Jews, all types of people, Muslims pay into the government, the government then cannot reflect one particular view over another just because we are the dominant group of religious people in the country because those numbers are changing every day. We need a neutralized government that protects our right to disagree with one another and agree with one another. Couldn't have said it better myself. Finally, a Christian that gets it. I know there are actually a lot of them out there, but they aren't speaking up. We need Christians out there talking about this stuff and fighting back against this kind of extremism. Because it's pretty obvious to everybody at this point that extremists couldn't possibly care less what people like me think of the movement. We need Christians out there fighting this stuff with us. I welcome Christians to be part of this movement. I want Christians to watch my channel and work with me to fight extremism. We absolutely Absolutely cannot do it without them. For the record, T.D. Jakes is a televangelist. He happens to be correct on this one issue, but he's also notorious for scamming people out of lots of money. So don't think he gets a pass. He's still crooked in many ways. Like I said, Bobert is nowhere near the only person working to make this dystopian nightmare a reality. Let me introduce you to Rick Scarborough. He's had some things to say on this very subject. He's been mentioned by the Southern Poverty Law Center as a hate preacher. Before I play the relevant clip, let me give you an idea of what he believes and how he views the world. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm a Christocrat. We're going to try to shake Texas up and move her back to bright red 
He calls himself a Christocrat, as opposed to a Democrat or a Republican. And one more thing you need to know before watching the clip. GRID is a homophobic name that right-wing extremists gave to HIV. It stands for Gay-Related Infectious Disease. It's not used by anybody except self-described Christocrats. This clip came out in 2015, not that long ago. Check it out. I believe that GRIDS was God's judgment on a sinful generation. I mean, I don't apologize for that. Is it an unforgivable sin? Of course not. In fact, I believe God would probably give us the cure for AIDS today if we put our foot down and said, we no longer tolerate this. We're not going to fund it with health care. We're going to hold you accountable. I believe if we started repenting across this country, some sharp, probably Christian or Jewish researcher would find the AIDS cure. Because God's a God of grace. They may find it anyway. But you know what? Be not deceived. God isn't mocked. Whatever man sows, he's going to reap. That's who we're dealing with. That's who Rick Scarborough is. That's how he views the world. He views it in blacks and whites. If you aren't exactly like him, he doesn't want you to be a part of the government, country, or even the world that he has in mind. If that last video didn't disturb you, check this one out. He lays out his plan for the country. This is from late March 2022. We've been there until 2016, but increasingly moving toward the purple. So these men who formerly underwrote our ministry called me back from Washington and said, do it again. So that's what we're doing now. RecoverAmerica.com is an effort to once again march across Texas, find a thousand preachers who will stand up, speak up, and refuse to give up, give them the tools, work with anybody who will work with us. But we're intending for this election cycle to create a pattern that can be duplicated all across America of Amen. pastor involvement. They're organized, they have a plan in place, and they're executing that plan. They fully intend to turn the U.S. into a Christian nationalist state. There's a whole movement behind these people, and they found their way to political power. And to the Christians out there who aren't really worried about how this is going to turn out, I promise you, you don't want to live in the world they have in mind either. To the Catholics, the Methodists, the Lutherans, the Moderates, you do not fit the vision they have in mind. They're speaking in generalities right now because if they got more specific, they know they'd lose influence. They can't come out and say, my very specific denomination of Christianity deserves political power and nobody else should be involved. Because when it boils down to it, these people are actually in the minority on a countrywide scale. Based on polls I've seen, I estimate the denomination we're dealing with here, this specific branch of evangelicalism, makes up about 20% of the country. But they're using Christianity as a whole to gain political power. If they come out and say, I'm a Christian and I stand for Christian values, they know they can get non-extremists to vote for them. But when they finally gain the political power they intend to, the mask will come off even more. They absolutely despise any other denomination of Christianity, especially Catholics. I renounce any affiliation with the Catholic Church and all of its idolatry. I refuse to justify paganism. We should be concerned, whether you're Christian or not. Like I said earlier, the solution a lot of these people have to getting non-Christians out of the country varies from deporting them to another country all the way to the final solution, as they called it in the 1940s. Believe me when I say some of these people have that in mind. But I don't want to leave you on a negative note. There are a few things we can do to mitigate the damage they're doing. We'll start out with the usual answers. Vote, donate to political campaigns, phone bake for politicians, and get involved any way you can. But there's another suggestion I've got for you. If you don't have the time to spare to volunteer for political campaigns, if you've already voted, if you don't have the money to donate, there's still one thing you can do. I've been monitoring these groups for years now, and if there's one thing I've learned from them, it's the power of word of mouth. There's a culture war raging 24-7 in the United States, and it goes back and forth every day. Whoever's winning the culture war in the moment, whichever side can convince the most politically uninvolved people to vote for their side, is who wins elections. Have you ever seen those I did that Biden stickers at gas stations? Everybody needs gas, even people who are politically disengaged. They drive up to the gas station, see the sticker, and think to themselves, wait, is Biden the reason why I'm paying so much for gas? Right-wing extremists have recognized it as a culture war issue they're currently winning, despite the fact that the President of the United States has little to no effect on gas prices. Here's the point. The far right is winning through memes. 
if you want to prevent self-described Christocrats from taking office, if you've already voted and donated all the time and money you can spare, you can still contribute through memes, ideas. Spread them to everybody you possibly can. You don't necessarily want to reach people who already have their mind made up. You want to reach people who aren't involved. Help them recognize how serious the situation is. The subreddit r slash political humor is a really good place to gather ideas and memes. Go through it, find the best ones, and spread them to everybody you know. Without propagandizing, without lying or twisting things around, without attacking people for inherent qualities about themselves, help us win the culture war. That's my suggestion for how you can help alleviate the absolutely insane situation that led to this. Maybe we need to have some sort of legislation that requires Constitution Alive and biblical citizenship training in our schools. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, there's Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. I sell all kinds of stickers and shirts and stuff on there. Or you can check out my other YouTube channels. I have my Fireside Chat channel, where I talk more about how religion is integrating itself into politics. Or you can check out my Telltale and Filtered channel, where I do long-form breakdowns of absolutely unhinged sermons and rallies. So if any of that sounds like it's up your alley, give it a watch. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.